So my name is Robin Seligman and I'm an immigration lawyer, Canadian immigration lawyer, and I'm past chair of the Ontario Bar Association immigration section, as well as the past chair of the national section of the citizenship and immigration section of the Canadian Bar Association. I'm certified as a specialist in immigration law by the Law Society of Upper Canada, and I've been practicing immigration law for approximately 28 years. So C-43, which is called the Faster Removal of Foreign Criminals Act, is anything but that. The legislation primarily focuses on the removal and deportation of permanent residents of Canada. That's permanent residents of Canada who have, owned, many of them have lived in Canada for their whole lives. And for, for committing quite minor criminality would be deported from Canada and permanently exiled from their families. So, I mean, the government has, has put forward the argument that we are getting rid of serious criminals and it's for the Canadian public's protection that we're doing this. And again, I don't have a problem with dealing with serious criminals in a way um, that protects Canadian society. However, when you're talking about a sentence of six months um, or more, I will give you examples of the types of criminality that are not that serious that would be covered by this legislation. They include things like fraud under $5,000, so that would be using a false check. They include theft under $5,000, they include um, driving while disqualified, they include taxi fraud, there's um, public mischief, solicitation, trespassing at night, failure to attend court, causing a disturbance, breach of any undertakings with the court, mischief under $5,000, you're talking about many times quite minor criminality and um, behavior and it could be a one-off situation that could lead to permanent exile for families. Let's say the, the criminal justice system hopefully is administered by the, the um, experts in the area on serious criminality, so I would think that the, the sentence right now of two years it, it should be the line that's drawn and we recommend it um, to the parliamentary committee and to the government that the, uh, the, the legislation in this area not be changed because two years seems to be an appropriate line that's been drawn. So to unilaterally reduce it to six months without any proper consultation and seems to be to fly in the face of what the criminal justice system says is serious versus non-serious. So if serious is two years in the criminal justice system then it should be consistent in the immigration system. Right now under our existing legislation, if somebody commits a crime and the sentence of, is two years or less, they have a right to what's called the Immigration Appeal Division. And the Immigration Appeal Division can look at all the circumstances of their case and determine whether they should be allowed to stay in Canada, whether they pose a risk to society, or whether they should be deported from Canada. What this bill does, it takes away that right. It takes away the objective assessment by an independent tribunal to review somebody's circumstances to see if they should be allowed to stay in Canada or not. This affects all communities. I'll give you an example. If someone has lived in Canada, they came in here as a child, they could be two months old, six months old, they're now 50 years old, they're married to a Canadian, they have Canadian children, they work, support their families, and that person gets into trouble with the law. Let's say they make a bad choice, they use a false check, or they use somebody else's identification and they get a sentence of six months, even a conditional sentence, they would have no right of appeal and they would be deported from Canada and permanently exiled from their families. The significance this, of this is huge and it affects many, many more people than one would like to think of because there's many people in Canada amongst the communities I just mentioned that never got their Canadian citizenship for no reason other than Many of them don't even know that they're not Canadian citizens. They came when they were children, their parents never got them citizenship, and many of them even think right now that they're Canadian citizens until they have a run-in with the law, and then all of a sudden they find out that they're not citizens, they're permanent residents. If you were in your early 20s or your late teens, and um, you committed an offense, it could be using false identification, it could be a minor drug offense, the government at any point could go back and go after um, you for the for these uh, convictions if you had a sentence of six months or more. And again, remember, this includes conditional sentences, which I said. 
uh, before. And conditional sentences are used by the criminal justice system as, um, as a way to get around jail sentences. And as you're aware, many um, criminal lawyers and people in the justice system plead to these offenses so people don't get criminal uh, jail time. But um, the result of now including conditional sentences in this uh, legislation means that people really can't plead to these offenses to move on with their lives. Uh, they'll have to fight them and again if there is any conviction uh, and the sentence of six months is six months or more, they're caught by this legislation. Now even more problematic, or just as problematic as this, is the fact that if the per person is a permanent resident and they're convicted of an offense abroad, or not even convicted if they commit an offense abroad, they'll be caught by this legislation. And I'll give you an example. If someone is, let's say, 19 years of age, they're a permanent resident of Canada, they lived in Canada their whole lives, and they go to the United States on their grad trip or with their, their university friends, and the drinking age in one of the states in the U.S. is 21, and they use false identification to get into a bar, this could be interpreted as personation, which under our criminal code could carry a sentence of 14 years, and therefore the person would become inadmissible to Canada even if they commit the offense without even being charged, but if somehow it comes to light that they committed the offense outside the country, they would be covered by this legislation. So that's pretty extreme. So the long and short of it is that the legislation is very draconian, it's very extreme, and it will impact many, many people who didn't think they'd be covered by the breadth of this legislation. The legislation is retroactive, so it applies to people that have been here all their lives and at some point get caught up or information comes to light that they, convicted, they were convicted of an offense. And I really, really believe that if most people really you know, understood the, the implications of this bill and the permanent separation from families for quite insignificant criminality, I don't think people would support it. I just think the way that the bill reads, you know, it comes out as if, if we're deporting serious criminals from Canada, and, and part of it will cover serious criminals, but that's an insignificant number in terms of the deportations that will take place. I mean, it says, it says C-43, Fast Removal of Foreign Criminals Act. Right in there it says Foreign Criminals Act, and again, these are permanent residents of Canada. They're not foreign criminals. They're made in Canada problems. Even if they, you, you can't say they're not made in Canada if they came to Canada when they were babies, infants, and young children. You know, I, I really feel that this legislation almost takes us back to biblical times where you're dealing with an eye for an eye. And, uh, you know, if the person does something wrong that, you know, there's no second chances, we will banish them. So you might ask yourself what you can do, and I have some recommendations and I highly, highly um, urge people to get involved. You need to lobby. You need to go to your members of parliament in your area and you can go with other members in your community, other communities, and you need to go talk to your members of parliament and tell them you're very, very concerned about C43. You need to tell them why you're concerned and you have to let them know that they will be accountable. If they're rubber stamping this bill and not raising your concerns in Ottawa that they're not doing their job. The other thing you must be aware of is that make sure children in your community and, other, and adults in the community know their status. Are they a permanent resident? Are they a Canadian citizen? If there is any criminality, the criminal lawyers must know their status because many times the criminal lawyers don't even ask that question and they end up pleading with clients because they won't have to serve jail time. But now pleading is something that they're not going to be able to do randomly. They're going to have to really assess the impact on the person. So if somebody is a permanent resident and they're in a criminal situation or they're, they're deciding whether to plead or not plead, they need to definitely let the criminal lawyer know their, their um, status in Canada and that criminal lawyer would most definitely have to con uh, contact an immigration specialist, a lawyer, to make sure they understand, fully understand the consequences of uh, pleading the person. So those are things that you can take steps immediately to do, uh, as well as educate your community. Let people know um, what's going on, what this bill encompasses, not only your community, but go to outreach, go to other communities, because as I mentioned at the beginning, this affects all communities, not just one particular community. So good luck, and um, I highly recommend you lobby.